Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection podcast. Today is a Q&A episode and I have three questions I want to dive into. But first, before I dive into those, I just want to go over a few ways uh, you can help support the podcast. So first, if you were just sick of focusing on weight loss and instead want a body recomp, then my one online coaching program is for you. I help you lose body fat and build muscle with my body recomp training, nutrition, and lifestyle methods. We look at things like your lifestyle and biofeedback to individualize your training and nutrition program to you and your specific needs. There's also at least one to two bottlenecks uh, that we figure out that are keeping you from seeing the results you want to see. And this is outside of the training and nutrition protocol. And these are keeping people back more than they think, right? If you are. So if you're interested in that, you can find a link in the show notes. You can reach out on Instagram if you have any questions on it. If you aren't interested in full coaching, I do one-on-one -on -one consultations where we troubleshoot any issues you have and or map out a game plan for the next couple months. If you want to learn more about a body recomp, I have my 75-minute masterclass on body recomp free class, what it is, how to do it. And you can find the link uh, to that in the show notes. If you don't follow me on Instagram, Jeff, H-O-E-H-N underscore, and that's where I'm most active on social media. And then lastly, if you found this podcast to be helpful in any way, if you could leave a rating and review, and that will help more people find this podcast. So with that out of the way, let's dive into today's questions. This is my first podcast after being on honeymoon, getting married. So it's good to be back. Probably a little rusty, right? I'm already can't think of my words here. I also, when we got back to, we got a new puppy. So Allie was pushing me to get that. And so I was like, all right, let's do it. It's for me, man. The last couple of weeks have just been like, just really out of the routine. And now that I'm back home and, and, and everything, we're trying to get the routine down with the puppy. And so I uh, found a little time here to record this podcast, but definitely sleep deprived the last couple of days and things like that. So we'll see how this goes, uh, but uh, excited to be back and everything like that. So let's um, dive into the question. So first question I got uh, the other day was, if you're overweight and building muscle you have to lose some muscle for a healthy weight. No question mark. And so I think this is a good question. I think it's a good one to go over because I do think that this is where, again, we can get very caught up in the scale weight and what that says here on this. Okay. So you need, you're somebody who's overweight. You need to get to a healthy weight does. So you need to just drop some weight for a lot of people. They aren't necessarily concerned about what that weight is made up of. Maybe they think that, oh, it's just less weight is better, but what that weight is made up of is super important. So you could, so my thoughts on this is you could do it this way, right? You could just be like, Hey, I need to get weight down. I just need to drop weight. I don't really care what that is coming from, whether it be fat mass, muscle mass, uh, or whatnot. However, I think you should be concerned about that. And I think you should be worried about that. And if I have a client in this situation, we're going to be focused on making sure that the weight that we lose is fat mass and not muscle mass because low levels of muscle mass is just going to lead to a lot of issues down the line, right? There's sarcopenia, which is the age-related loss of muscle mass. And that leads to a ton of issues, right? I'm, I really, I truly believe that a lot of the issues we have in today's world is yes, people are overweight, but I think the bigger issue is people are also under muscled, right? And so you take somebody who's overweight, they probably already in most cases, like, yes, people do that just because you're overweight doesn't mean you don't work out, but in mo in many situations, they're not exercising as much as they should be, or uh, again, they might not be lifting weights as much. So I, I don't think they have as much lean body mass as they already should have. And so for already at a high body weight, low muscle, just losing more muscle again, it's going to make the process of getting leaner, tougher. You're going to feel hungrier. And then obviously you're not going to be as strong and that's going to lead to a lot of issues um, down the line. So while yes, you need to focus on getting weight off um, if you're in this situation to get to a quote unquote healthy weight, but again, what that weight is made up of is super important. And this is where things like BMI maybe aren't the greatest. I do think it has a lot of merit, right? Like it, it is something we need to look at if your BMI is super high, like you, you probably, you need to get that down. But it doesn't really take into consideration what your body mass is made up of. And that is super important. So in, in saying this, while body weight is important when it comes to overall health, what that weight is made up of, it, fat mass, muscle mass is a big factor. So in this situation, I wouldn't just be like, hey, I need to get weight off. I don't care where it comes from. I really think you need to make sure that you focus on making sure that you maintain as much lean body mass as possible. Now, is it going to be a little bit slower? Probably your weight loss will probably slow down just a little bit. And we'll talk about specific strategies here that you can um, do to focus on this. But again, if, if you're such, if you're, if you're in a big rush to get down to a certain healthy weight, the chances of it coming back are going to be higher. So it's like, why put in all that work? Chan the chance of it going back up is very high, right? Because then it's like, you could end up getting in this yo-yo cycling. And when people get in this yo-yo dieting cycle, they end up losing lean body mass in the process. And they're at the same weight, but they have more body fat, less lean body mass. And then what makes it, you have to continue to lose more to, to have a, a, a better look. And it's just this, this trickle down effect here. So we want to make sure that we're maintaining lean body mass as much as possible. Plus, like I mentioned on the way down, if you're losing muscle in the process, you're going to be hungrier. The, the, the chances of you regaining the weight are going to be much higher as well too. So in saying this, yes, you can, but I would never in any situation, I, 
our focus is always going to be on losing fat mass over lean body mass. Now, I think even if you do things perfectly, there might be a chance that you lose a little bit of lean body mass. That's okay. We just don't want it to be this massive amount, right? So I'm going to talk to you about what things you could do um, in this process to help with that. How to make sure most of it or all of it is fat mass loss over muscle mass loss. So first thing, we want to make sure we're lifting weights, right? A lot of people, when they are just trying to drop weight because they're overweight, it's over it's, oh, I'm going to just do cardio and eat in a deficit. And that can work, but it's a lot tougher, right? And, and many times people don't feel as great in the process and they just don't like the way they look. And you always just want to keep losing more and more. And so, yeah, so we want to make sure that we're lifting weights in the process. You can still do some cardio. You, you know, can still, obviously you're going to need to eat in a calorie deficit. You can still do those things, but we need to make sure we're lifting weights in the process. And again, I think people shy away because they hear lifting weights and they think, oh, I'm going to gain a ton of weight. That's not the case for somebody that's overweight. They're in this prime position to be able to build some lean body mass while dropping fat mass. But even if you don't want to add lean body mass, it's important that you at least maintain it. And so with maintaining, it actually takes a lot less to do that. So you can just lift two to three times a week here and you're good to go. We don't really Really have to push it super hard. You just need to send that stimulus or send that signal stimulus to your body. Hey, let's keep the muscle that we have. So you have two options here. You do need to lift weights, but you have the option of, Hey, maybe we train four or five days a week. We push it. You can add some lean body mass on the process. That's going to pay off later on down the line. Is it going to slow down weight loss a little bit? Maybe, or it may, might not just depends there. Or we can go to, Hey, we're just going to maintain route. And when we maintain, we're just going to, we're going to do less, but we're going to maintain the lean body mass we have and just focus on dropping muscle mass. But we need to make sure we lift weights there on that. The second thing we need to make sure we avoid large deficits. Ideally, no more than 0.75 to 1% of body weight per week for extended periods of time is that cut off there for a couple of reasons. One, going higher than this, like that's super challenging to do. If you don't have the, the diet skill to do it, it's going to be really challenging to do that, right? Because it's going to come with higher hunger levels, lower energy levels. You're just going to have this drive to to eat and it's really hard to manage that. So what you end up see happening a lot of times here when people go higher than 1% per week, they might be in a deficit for periods of time, but then when you zoom out on the long scale, it's, it's a longer time frame. They're they're not, they end, up, they end up consuming more calories than they think and they end up being at maintenance or a small surplus there. So that's obviously not great for dropping body fat, right? So again, in, in, in the time, it like sucks because it's like 0.751%, but still a good rate of loss per week there on that. But it might be slower in time, but if you zoom out, yeah, it's slower in time, but it's going to be more sustainable. It's more likely to actually stick and stay. So in, in that case, what, what ends up being slower, right? I think to me, going quick, it coming right back on, that ends up being slower uh, in the long run, even though it's faster in the moment. But also these large deficits, not only are they hard to adhere to, they also risk lean body mass loss. Okay. So we just talked about why we want to make sure we maintain our, our lean body mass in this process. So again, if we go higher than this, you are risking some lean body mass loss uh, in the process. Third thing, you want to make sure you get enough sleep but quality sleep, right? Obviously you could sleep for eight hours, but if you're just tossing and turning, you're not getting great sleep, that's not great, right? We want to make sure we have quality sleep uh, in the process as well too. So some things to help you with quality sleep, getting outside first thing in the morning, getting some sunlight and um, that can help set your circadian rhythm, cut back on overall caffeine intake, cut back on how closely you have it to bedtime, getting into a nice bedtime routine, right? A wind down routine where you listen to calming music, do some breath work, journal, things like that. Things that just get you out of that fight or flight mode that don't like to get your heart rate up, stuff like that. Keeping the room nice and cool, anywhere from 65 to 72 degrees, keeping it completely dark in there. And then also using some white noise as well to help some people don't like that. So those are a few things. And then if you have trouble falling asleep, try to get out of bed for a little bit until you're tired. Like really try to hone in on that, that bedtime routine and then go to bed when you're tired. Because if you start tossing and turning, you start to associate your bed with like anxiety, not being able to fall asleep. And that how you perceive that is super important there. So you also want to look out uh, for that. And lastly, we want to make sure we eat enough protein per day. You don't have to have this one gram per pound of body weight, especially if you are overweight, those can, those numbers can get super high. So I think what you want to do here is you probably want to get at least three to four servings per day at around minimum 20 to 30 grams of protein per day. I think if you hit that, you're in a good spot, especially if you're lifting weights, right? So those are the minimums we want to hit. So that's what we want to do in this process. Again, all these things are important. I think they are counterintuitive to what people want to do when they're overweight. Oh, hey, oh crap, I'm overweight. I need to drop this weight. Let's just get it down as quick as possible. Again, that's where people get themselves into trouble on um, long-term there with that. So long story short, if you're overweight, building muscle, you don't have to lose some muscle for a healthy weight there on that, right? Um, you just need to drop some body fat. And these are some things that you can do there um, to help with that. Great question. I love that one. I thought it was a really good one to go over. The next question is, does a small surplus really help with muscle building? Afraid to increase in case it just becomes fat. All right. So let's go over this. Compared to a deficit, 100%, a small surplus is going to be better than a deficit for 
building muscle, right? I talk a lot about body recomp. Okay. I thought you said we can build muscle in a deficit, et cetera. You can, but if we're going to compare it to a deficit being in a small calorie surplus, hundred percent is going to be better for muscle growth, right? Like you, if you were to compare it, the person that's in the surplus is likely going to have more muscle growth in the long run than the person who is recomping or whatever it may be, right? Compared to maintenance calories, I still think that a small surplus is going to be better than, than maintenance calories for building muscle. So again, people are like, well, I thought you said we can, you can. So in, in this last case, just because something is better, doesn't mean you can't still build muscle at maintenance. I think people hear, oh, a small surplus is better. Therefore I can't build muscle maintenance. That's not the case. You can still build muscle maintenance, but that surplus is going to be, it's going to put you in a better position to build muscle. So again, it might just be a little less than in a surplus if you're at maintenance, right? So you just need to weigh the pros and cons of that. If you're, uh, if you really don't want to gain much, if any fat mass, then maybe for you, it's, you need to stay at maintenance. If you're okay with, Hey, maybe it's going to be a little less muscle growth in the long run. If you're someone that's, I freaking want to get as jacked as possible. I want to build as much muscle as possible. You probably are going to have to be in that small surplus, right? Like you're going to be okay with that small weight gain that again, you'll lose or that small fat gain that you'll lose at some point. So again, it all comes down to you there on that. And so I just want to go over a few studies here because so there was a study from Garth in 2012. And basically what they did here is they put people, one group was on a higher uh, caloric intake and one was at a, they put these two groups in, they had the one that they just ate libum, uh, libum well, I cannot say it, but basically means they were just able to eat whatever. And they averaged about 2,900 calories. And then they had a nutrition counseling group and they ate about 3,600 calories. And the body weight increased more in the nutrition group that was eating 3,600 calories than that, the group that was just eating whatever they wanted, the word I can't say. And the fat mass did increase more in that nu nutrition counseling group, but gain in lean body mass was not difference between the groups. So really what this tells us is, okay, that surplus is good. Too much is not uh, where we want to be. So we want to make sure that we don't have that surplus be too large. That's one thing that you can do there um, on that. And then I, uh, paper on body composition um, basically states that in order to see these gains in lean body mass, although lean mass gains have been reported in the literature during hypocaloric conditions, right? So hypocaloric being a calorie deficit, diets primarily focused on lean mass gain are likely optimized via sustained caloric surplus to facilitate anabolic processes and support increasing training demands. The composition and magnitude of the surplus, the inclusion of an exercise program, as well as training status of the subjects can influence the nature of the games. Larger caloric surpluses are more appropriate for untrained subjects who are primed for more dramatic progress in lean mass and for those with a high level of need. On the other hand, smaller cal caloric surpluses are appropriate for more advanced trainees who may be at a higher risk for undue fat mass gain during aggressive hypercaloric conditions, hyper being calorie surplus. It should be noted that not all trainees will fit within this general framework. Some novices might require smaller surpluses while some advanced trainees will require larger surpluses in order to push muscular gains forward. But yeah. So basically, again, that surplus is going to be a little bit better than a, than a deficit. But again, that small surplus, but it, it just comes down to what you want to do there. You know what I'll say, and, and I hit on this in these studies, if you have it under control, the amount of fat you, you will gain will be non-existent and fat loss dieting is a lot easier than eating to build muscle is right. So you're okay with that trade-off of, Hey, maybe a little bit of fat gain that if it's under control, it's not going to be that much because you can drop that body fat later because that is an easier process, right? That muscle tissue is tough to come by. So we're okay with that small gain. I also find that people have some wiggle room to maximize some things for muscle growth before they worry about going into a small surplus or not. I do think there's a lot of things people can do before they have to worry about that. So hopefully that helped you there figure out, Hey, is a surplus, is a small surplus really needed? Right. Do I need to do that? And, and, and again, it just depends on how, how far you want to push it and, and whatnot there. But in general, yes, a small surplus is going to be better, but that doesn't mean you can't build muscle at maintenance or potentially a small surplus on in certain situations. All right. So last question of the day, I really love veggies and get basically all my carbs from them is this bad? Should I do other sources? So again, I think it depends on the goal, but for this particular person, they do want to maximize muscle growth. So is it bad? No, but it's likely not going to be optimal. Okay. So I wouldn't say this is a bad thing. So a few thoughts on this. If you do this, if you're in a calorie deficit for fat loss, you may have to do this by necessity. Right. Um, but in most cases, this is not likely I've never been in a situation where somebody's deficit so low that they need to, especially for someone that's general pop population, they just want to look better. They want to drop some body fat. They don't have a competition. Like for them, I've never seen it where it's like, Oh, you have to be like, you have to get so low that you can just have veggies. Right. But in certain situations that might happen. If you're not in a calorie deficit, Deficit, then I would worry that you aren't getting enough overall carb in your diet if they come from all veggies, right? The amount of food you would need to get that many carbs would be very challenging from a gut health digestion perspective because of the amount of fiber and overall food volume it would take to get there. 
So that's the big issue. If you are in a surplus or at maintenance, like it would just be too hard to get enough carbohydrates in from just veggies, in my opinion, to get enough to really help fuel training and things like that. Because again, the, the amount you would need to have, it's just be high food volume, too much fiber, be really hard to get that in. And I just wouldn't see how you could get more than a hundred grams of carbohydrate per day through, through all veggies. So that would be the biggest issue. It's not bad, but you're likely not going to be maximizing muscle growth if the, or body composition, if that's your goal outside of a uh, calorie deficit. So we just want to find sources of carbohydrates that are easier to get in. That's the thing. You can over food volume yourself at some point uh, there on that. So hopefully that was helpful. That's it for this episode. Let me know if you have any questions on this and I will chat with you guys next time.